Uh, my name is Jose Sosa, and I am with New York Passive House. I am accompanied by Sam McAfee from Zola Windows, and we would like to welcome everyone. Uh, we are excited to have you all back and talking about uh, Windows, which is one of the one of the topics everyone's always very excited to to learn. Uh, and today we're specifically discussing pricing of high performance windows and doors, and I think that is that is one topic that has been that that is always debate there's always a debate about it so hopefully sam is going to be able to give us some good pointers and good insight into how to get them to work for our project so uh i'm gonna take any more time i'll let sam take it from here hello everyone good morning good afternoon um, some names I recognize, a lot of names I don't, and it's uh, good to have you guys here to uh, hopefully, hopefully this will give you some tools to help you uh, within your design process, uh, help identify uh, operation and glass and frames in order to like optimize the budgets for what you guys are building. Um, I'm with Zola Windows. I'm a fenestration, I guess, expert. I don't really like to call myself that, but after you know, 15 years of, of, of talking and doing windows and building physics and passive house, I've kind of found myself this knowledge <laughs> on the subject. So um, I've tried to put together today a presentation for you to uh, uh, guide you uh, with tools. So as you're in the design process, rather than uh, what so often happens is post design, you start to bid out a project. And in fact, at that moment, you're like, oh, wait, I have to re redesign my project because I didn't understand the dynamics of how to control the budget with the design. So hopefully I, I'm going to give you some tools today so you guys can uh, um, can, can uh, pre-design before that process. Um, a little bit about Zola Windows. Uh, if you don't know Zola Windows, uh, Zola Windows has been around for over a decade. It's a uh, it's done more high performance certified passive houses in North America than any other brand. It's from the high performance realm. Uh, it's uh, designed and built from and by architects for architects and for high performance futuristic buildings. Uh, the key to what it is is, is, is Zola has uh, kind of solidified itself as a bunch of building nerds uh, in the same room, uh, focusing on air tightness, focusing on the minutia of uh, thermal performance, and, and also focusing on uh, keeping prices where they should be for the marketplace. Why I'm involved, and, and my history has been from historic buildings in New York City, uh, designing and being a part of, as well as certifying some of the first historic uh, passive houses, landmark passive houses, and developing uh, many of the high performance passive house historic projects in New York City. I think I've been involved in maybe uh, over 80 or 90 uh, passive house projects in my uh, tenure with about uh, a dozen or so certified by myself. So that's where I come from. That's what Zola roughly is. And, and um, that's, uh, let me just jump into the presentation and uh, give you this logic, this kind of algorithm that I've created so you guys can take a look at it. All right, so why are windows so expensive? How to design for optimal value. That's the basis of this. And it's a design process that uh, as project managers, we do with our clients at Zola all the time. Uh, and what the, what the idea is that people come to us with an expectation of what they want, uh, but what they want also is for budget and they don't know how to rectify both what their design requests are and or what their budget uh, needs are for the performance they're looking for. And so those three pieces are, are always fighting against each other. Um, so what I've done is I put together uh, an analysis and what we do, what we do is it, we work from eight by 10 foot pieces of glass. So we, uh, we can do oversized glass bigger than eight foot by 10 foot, but this is, this is a standard glass size for us. So uh, what I've done is I put together a, a, a two panel an eight, eight by 20 and a 10 by 16. So the taller by 16, so it's eight and eight. And then the, the, the shorter by eight, which is 10 and 10. And both of these are 160 square foot. And I've done an analysis across six different operation types and three different frame types to show you the price range and, and how you can actually get the same amount of glass for different budgets, uh, budget amounts. And what we have, we have actually a, a 3X plus uh, price range differential from the lowest cost window at this size to the highest cost window at this size. And I just want to clarify that all of these windows are passive house level performance. All of them use triple R11 glass and all of them have high performance thermal frames and the right air tightness for passive house. So this is not so much 
a performance equation. This is literally a frame preference and an operational preference for the same size opening. And in detail from the, the, the low end, we have the tens and last for in the two fixed side by side in uh, two different heights, eight foot by 10 foot and, uh, and uh, the three different frame types. And then of course, windows with a fixed combination are the next lowest and then doors a little bit higher, but then we get into the French door and there's actually some interesting assumptions that I had made and I had been working from that I found were, were wrong when I did this analysis. And then as we move over, of course, the lift slides are in the, the twice as much or more uh, than just the fixed or window and fixed. And then as you go over even further, you get to the accordion uh, door into the spectrum and it's definitely the most expensive by a lot. So let's dive into the details here. The lowest is uh, 5,800 for the 160 square foot and it's a UPVC window fixed combo. Uh, at eight foot and the highest price uh, in this analysis is, is the accordion eight foot thermal clad, which is the wood window with uh, exterior aluminum cladding at 34. Okay. So I'm gonna just jump right into the middle where everybody always wants to start with a conversation about an opening, which is lift slides and, and show you the different configurations and, and actually the cost implications of those different configuration decisions. Um, as you can see, uh, French opening and or two panel lift slides are the most expensive uh, for that for the same dimension. It's 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 a premium of like five thousand dollars, three to five thousand dollars to add a second door. So one operating door versus two operating doors. And you can see in the OX configuration that that actually is uh, that actually is like five thousand dollars cheaper, four thousand dollars cheaper than than the the dual acting to one side. What's interesting though is, is the eight foot compared to the 10 foot, uh, you, you, for the French, you have a difference, but then across the other ones, you don't really have a price difference. So uh, it was a little surprising that uh, the 10 foot versus the eight foot had that relationship. Uh, but more importantly, you can please, this is probably your first introduction to, to clad versus all wood versus a UPVC comparison, but you can see a dramatic difference in the frame, uh, the frame factor when it comes to when it comes to actually the uh, cost of a window. Yeah. Selecting a, 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 a wood clad, which is the preferred often is in fact much more expensive endeavor than going with UPVC. Uh, there's lots of reasons to that when it comes to material costs, when it comes to labor, and when it comes to uh, the uh, factory process that uh, assembles this. UPVC is a highly automated material that is a low cost while providing a very high performance. So. When people come to us and talk about budget and they're way over their budget, we immediately start talking about wood or UPVC. Uh, and in some cases we start talking about maybe a hybrid system and I'll show you that philosophy a little bit later. In the door and the door fixed, um, you can see that uh, some assumptions like here at the bottom below the 58 to 34, the, the doors and the combination of doors and how you break up that fixed glass actually doesn't have a lot of impact on the actual cost of this opening. So I was actually surprised to find that actually the larger pieces of glass adjacent to a door were approximately the same price as trying to divide it up into smaller pieces of glass. And that's inclusive of the tempering requirements, inclusive of the structure that we need to build those large units. So window and window or door next to uh, kind of larger units uh, actually uh, roughly stays the same. But again, you can see that the price factor for the frame type from clad to wood to UPVC is, is pretty dramatic. So. Of course, doors versus French doors. Uh, I had always assumed, my personal, that's from a lot of the data I've seen that uh, if you had like a lift slide and you switched to a French door that you would actually see a, a sizable price uh, uh, drop. And in fact, if you do ganged French doors across an entire opening like this, it's actually kind of expensive. <laughs> if you do it in combination with, with fixed windows, uh, to, to, to mirror the opening. So for instance, on the bottom left corner, the eight by 20 uh, center French flanked by two, uh, uh, two fixed units, that's about 16,400. That's, that's actually uh, not quite two X, but it's like uh, maybe about 40% less than a center opening lift slide of the same configuration, not about the same opening. But if you think about it as a three panel with the center opening, that, that lift slide was in the lower left corner, the French doors. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, the uh, center of French with two flanking fixed 
that uh, that in comparison to a lift slide, which is like a center, a three panel lift slide with a center opening, that's about like, about uh, 6,000 or so. I can go back and take a look at the analysis. That's about six or 7,000. So one way to get the same opening as a lift slide is actually to replace the opening that you're trying to get with the lift slide with a French and then do the rest in fixed. And you'll actually save quite a, quite a few thousand dollars uh, just on that opening if you're willing to move from a, from a uh, lift slide to a French. And here's that analysis here. So you can see it's the bottom uh, left one, which is 24,000 compared to the, uh, the French door that is 16,400. And, and so that's a sizable chunk for having the same amount of opening. Now it's, it's not the same configuration. We can do, we can do French doors in both in-swing and out-swing. Uh, so of course there's a design change. Um, and uh, just as a note, we, we do offer lift slides with uh, bug screens, but we do not offer uh, swing doors with bug screens. So there's a, a couple factors that might actually influence the decision. Uh, but interestingly enough, for all of the clear openings, the, the one with the most opening is actually the top French door with the full gang. That gives you the most clear opening for engaging the into outdoor space. Uh, the second most, uh, the second one is in fact the two panel lift slide with uh, two panels moving to the uh, one side. And you can see that those are in fact the most expensive ones actually on the document as well. So there's a combination of how much functionality when it comes to operation and then how much clear opening it is. And it seems to be that the price, the more clear opening you want in the operation, the higher the price tends to be. So uh, doors compared to windows. Um, interestingly enough, uh, there isn't a huge difference between doors and windows when you say, I want a door flanked by two fixed or I want a window flanked by uh, uh, fixed windows. Uh, the one era, when the one outlier that I included in this is the top left, and that's where I asked my team to uh, give me the price of the max size fixed window they would build beyond eight foot by 10 foot that they would gain to a, a window or door. And it, it ended up being 12 foot max. So an eight foot by 12 foot max. And, and that oversized glass charge drove that price up immensely. And you can see that's like the, the most expensive unit that I have priced in the entire operation. I didn't include it into the low to high because it's an outlier, but uh, asking for glass that's over eight foot by 10 foot uh, causes a specialty glass request and it takes it out of the regular market. And that, that glass is actually rather expensive. Uh, we can certainly do it. And, and, and in the European market, I've seen windows and doors. Uh, I've seen a lift slide system that was 27 foot tall, single piece, triple. Uh, so the glass manufacturers can do it, but the price to ship the open top container, the, the, it's a specialty glass to get, it's extremely expensive. So we typically recommend that people stay away from it. And when we do price it, they often, in fact, almost every time, pull back from it and, and, and go back to dividing up their light uh, windows in certain ways to get that price down. The range of fixed versus lift slide is pretty dramatic. And this is the just showing the bookends to the entire uh, analysis. I mean, the cost of glass, is not really the driving factor when it comes to how much a unit costs. It, 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 it really has to do with the operation and the frame type. I mean, we have two very, very large fixed units, eight by 20 and also 10 by 16. And they're both in the 6,000 range for that, that, those large pieces. That's like a window wall. Uh, and if you switch to uh, fit, switch operation into the lift slide configuration, the price doubles. Uh, approximately a little bit more than doubles, depends on which configuration you go with. And then, which has to do with hardware and the either double or triple sill. Uh, but then also, again, the biggest impact is frame selection. So there's a wide variety of, of frames that we can, you can choose from for the same opening. And, and if you can actually use, uh, if you could actually mix frame types on a project, then you will see that, uh, the project cost will come down. And, and what I mean by that is, uh, in some cases, I've, I've actually designed uh, projects with clients where the upper windows are all UPVC, and then the main living and lower windows are actually uh, like an interior stain clear fur with an exterior cladding. And from the outside, you can't tell the difference between the windows. They have the exact same color, almost the exact same profiles. They feel the same. The lower ones are clad with wood finish on the inside while the rest of the house is white, white uh, UPVC. And the actual project costs are dramatically lower than if the entire project went as a, uh, a wood clad system. So here are the factors of operation type. 
and, and this is kind of the algorithm to give away based on analysis is that um, for fixed units being the, the starting variable, these are the different stages and the factors of cost as you move to these types of operations. Windows and doors are in the 1.2 to 1.5. If you go to the French door configurations, it's like a 1.6 to 1.8 factor. And then lift slides are two to two and a half ish. And then of course, breeze panels are above that. The other factor then is the frame type, which is the biggest factor. So as you move from UPVC into the wood and the wood clad, you get a dramatic increase in the cost of that. So how do these two factors and how do you use them? Well, as an example, if you take a fixed eight by 20 UPVC window and you put it through its two changes in order to get it to thermal class, if it were just going to an accordion door, by the way, we don't do UPVC and accordion, but if it were just going to another operation, then it would just go through an operation change factor. But in this case, it's going through both the operation and its frame type change. And so it's 6,700 times three times 1.69 gets you into the 34,000 realm. And that's a double pump in a sense, like you're literally asking for two changes. So this is like a 4X, this is like a 5X. This is a huge range to which the price of a project could change while having, no, having high performance glass in the same size opening. And, and I, I, I'm always shocked at, well, I know that people want the inside to outside connection, but, but the more operation you want, the more opening you want, the, the, the more cost is going to be on the project. So designing that opening sparingly throughout the project is probably the key to bringing the price down. So since frame is such a big part of uh, the cost of a window, uh, sometimes I try to get clients, uh, usually not terribly successful, to do a hybrid approach and mix products. So here I did an analysis of two different designs where I used one single eight foot by 10 foot fixed UVPC unit and, and, and coupled it with a more expensive thermal clad entry or terrace door unit. And the idea is through design, you could use eight foot by 10 foot fixed UVPC units, which are very inexpensive for their size and performance. And, and in fact, embed the frame into the wall and bring the finish to the glass line. There's a couple of nuances with stops and, and if you need to replace glass and how uh, some of the returns need to be removable. But uh, you know, if somebody actually wanted to explore this, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like them to contact me and I can share with them some more granular details of what, how they'd have to approach this. But then you could use the least expensive product, which is a fixed UPVC in conjunction with your desired product, which is the maybe thermal clad or wood or even aluminum in, in some cases, while treating the UPVC fixed window as a frameless system and making the frame go away by bringing the finishes to the glass lines. And so on the left is a, a 7-6 door, which mirrors the, the glass dimension in the, the eight foot UPVC. And the two of them together for like an entry door would be 8,200. And the terrace door version, which uh, uses a smaller sash uh, it's 7,600 for the combo. And then in the 10 foot realm, you can see the same analysis, which is a shorter door to get the door so the finishes align with the actual embedded glass of the UPVC. And you get a $10,500 entry combo and an $8,600 terrace. So th these numbers are, are on the lower end of the spectrum while giving you the clad door that you might desire with a large piece of glass you desire without paying for the, the clad large piece of glass. I wanted to throw in uh, some door analysis, some basic door analysis. I think I could probably go and run a completely new presentation just on entry doors, and, and I think I probably will. Uh, but uh, preliminarily, you can see that you know a basic you know four foot eight foot uh, three six uh, eight foot entry door, you know, and, and the entry and the terrace versions are, are in the five, and then as you add configurations and height to the uh, moving over, it goes up. The second door position. Uh, if you can see by the icons, is actually a pivot door. And, and we do actually offer a pivot door, uh, but that, that configuration is, is more than double a non-pivot door configuration. And so 
I guess I'm just trying to give a realm on design that often we get pivot door requests coming through, but without the understanding that actually it, it doubles the price of the entry door right off the bat for having that hardware frame and, and that pivot configuration. So I should also note that the pivot door is also not airtight to passive house level because it uses brushes and there's no ceiling mechanism. So it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, in the historic realm, uh, this is a thermal cloud analysis, but thermal wood, you can see that as the door builds up, it goes from being a basic high performance air tight door into being a much more like, you know, complex, especially with arch tops and stuff like that, that the price more than triples as you build up this entry system. Um, in the marketplace of large entry systems, the one on the far right, 17,400 is extremely cheap for historically accurate <laughs> doors of this size. So uh, for high performance passive house, with, you know, this kind of glass and performance, that's actually, uh, it's pretty amazing that the market actually can get you large historically accurate units in this price realm, so. So back to lift slides, uh, which is where everybody seems to want to come back to because they always want these large sliding systems. Uh, and I wanted to bring it in a relationship to accordion systems for max opening. Um, these two systems are the most expensive system when it comes to operation uh, for the same opening. Uh, the key reasons to that is the very complicated hardware and the sophisticated frame mechanisms, as well as the sills. There's a lot of labor when it comes to actually executing these and a lot of precision when it comes to executing these and they're very specialty products. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, Zola itself, we don't do sliding doors, which are traditional to the United States. We do lift slide systems. And for those who, who don't know what a lift slide is compared to a sliding door, uh, a lift slide uh, when in the closed position is, is uh, sealed on all uh, edges of the unit. It's it's pulled into its jams and it settles onto its sill, hence the lift slide. It settles onto its sill, which 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 uh, seals the head of the door and also the, the the bottom of the door. And so that's why our lift slide systems are passive house level air tightness. Um, accordion doors are not passive house level air tightness. They're very tight. But because of the number of lapping joints and the inability to do this lift slide type of system, they're very tight, but they're not passive house level. So I just want to give you give people a heads up that actually the most expensive window wall nano type system is actually often not appropriate for high performance passive house, while also being the most expensive. And there is a there's a hit to the performance. According doors do have a, a decreased performance level uh, because of the amount of frame compared to glass. Uh, the glass is the highest performing component of these systems. And the more frame you have, uh, the less glass uh, uh, gets to boost and, and, and account for the frame. So the more glass you can use, the less frame, the higher performance of the actual unit. So and then as a bonus, I just threw this in uh, to show you that we can actually do massive units. <laughs> and I even think we could probably go bigger than this, but this is what they gave me. Uh, 10 foot tall by 38.8 at uh, French opening OXXXXO and the same for eight foot. And you know, that eight foot at 48, that is a massive center opening. And so connecting the two at these price points, those are also uh, pretty crazy, but this is just a kind of a bonus kind of throughout while I was there. And I think the uh, doors and max openings will be uh, put together as a, a follow-up presentation to show how you can do very, very large glass systems and or all the different types of entry systems with solid panel. And I'll, I'll do that as a follow-up presentation another time. And there we go. That is it, I think. Yes, thank you. Um, and I'll take present uh, questions for anybody who wants to uh, ask questions. All right, thank you, Sam. That was definitely insightful. Uh, so I also want to welcome Linda that's on the presentation. I, I didn't see hey, coming in before I did the presentations of uh, Sam. Uh, so let me see what's on the chat, uh, just to get those out of the way first. Uh, so there's one question. Uh, what are the profile differences between the three lines? Is UPVC thinner? Referring to the frame, I think. Interesting enough, uh, as a sectional profile, they're almost all exactly the same. Like the outside dimension of the glass is very close to each other. I can pull up a comparison of it, but but you know, contact me, I'll give you CAD files, but uh, ultimately they are very, very close to being exactly the same. So there's there's not a lot of difference in thinness. 
Yeah, no, that's that's actually good information to know because sometimes there's that question on which material frame is going to be better performing and also how is that going to affect my sight lines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that that's good to clarify. Um, and then I have a, a question from Trevor. What about warranty or lifetime for different materials? Sure, sure. And 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 the the subtext of that is uh, people uh, feel that uh, UPVC windows aren't as uh, long lasting. It's true that the warranty is is less. Uh, ultimately, it has to do with the finish on the wood and and how it lasts, as well as uh, how well the the uh, wood clad unit is put together. Um, all three systems uh, do have different warranties. The, the UPVC has a slightly less warranty. Uh, the the three, the three systems are all modular though. So if glass fails, glass can be removed from a unit and replaced. If a gasket fails, the gasket can be replaced by itself. If the hardware fails, the hardware can individually be replaced. And so the life of the window is not, uh, you know, it's the right to repair kind of thing. Uh, the systems, including the stuff that you, you, you work with, Jose, I know that all of these European systems are uh, modular and component based where you can easily take out pieces and repair pieces on site. You don't have to like rip out the whole window. So the warranty is for the whole window, but the lifespan of the window itself is extremely long, way beyond the warranty because of the repairability of these types of units, the adjustability, as well as the, the fact that they all use multi-point hardware. And multi-point hardware makes the units stay more stable for them a longer life. They pull the system together. You don't have this like long-term sagging and warpage because every time the window's closed, the window is tied together and that window is tied to the building. So unless there's an outward pressure of building sagging and, and putting pressure on the window, this window is there to stay for a very long time. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw out argon Argon as a question when people are like, well, how, what about the argon leaking from the windows, my ghosting of the glass? Uh, European Union, they actually test and track and they're required to have less than 1% loss of argon per year per test. There is no test like that in the United States. It's not tracked. All you see is ghosting in your window with like the nice like haze. You go to wipe, wipe your window and try to clean it and you realize you no longer can clean it because it's actually in the glass. That's a failed glazing unit. Uh, I don't know of a single situation at Zola where that's happened or with any other European Union uh, based manufacturer because they actually regulate that and their sills and uh, chemical seals are much higher quality. So yes, there is a warranty. Most of it has to do with finish. Uh, the UPVC window is a steel reinforced UPVC window, highly stable. Uh, U it has a UV stabilizer in it. So uh, all three of them are high quality windows at high performance. Can I ask another question? Can you hear me? Um, so if I am designing windows for a house and uh, I should be imagining the eight by 10 panel as something I can work with and try and minimize loss. So building windows that are four feet tall as opposed to five feet tall, and that will save me money in the end. Four foot versus five foot. There's actually, yeah, this, this is a good question. So there's actually kind of a rough other, within Zola itself, other window manufacturers have a slightly different answer to this. We use a couple different types of glass. And as a, as a unit gets larger, we have to switch to a, a thicker glass with more structure because the glass needs more structure to be larger. Uh, that's approximately at 30 square feet. So when you hit the 30 square foot mark, I guess I should add a slide to the presentation about this. When you hit the 30 square foot mark, we will have to do an upgrade to our glass and go from a triple four millimeter to a triple six millimeter in order for that structure and stability for that window to remain. Uh, one thing that Zola does that some other manufacturers don't is we do a, it's actually a, a triple upgrade for us where we can just use a four millimeter untempered glass in the smaller windows. When we switch to the six, the only glass we use is a six millimeter tempered heat soak treated glass. So there actually is a premium to that structured glass. And the reason we do that triple upgrade, so it's, it's not a small upgrade, it's actually a full structural glass, is because we don't want breakage. We're gonna ship it, it's big. You're gonna move it on site. There's going to be environmental concerns. It's going to go over elevation and come back down to you somewhere in the United States. 
uh, we want to we want to guarantee that that window is perfect. It's big, it's expensive to ship, and when it gets to you, it needs to be in one piece and ready for you to put in. And when you handle it, it needs to have no flaws that crack while you're moving it around. So when you install it, so we do it the triple upgrade for large units. It's a little bit more than what you asked, but just to give an idea, four foot versus five foot, not a big difference. It really is just a straight square footage. We're probably using the same four millimeter glass for that type of unit. Uh, a 70, uh, I think a 78 inch tall by three foot or two foot wide, still the same glass. So again, within that realm. So four by five window is probably your best value in that kind of, roughly. once it gets yes. to four by six, then you're over the, you're 32 feet and then four, you're into. Four foot's got a beam on swing. There's some question about the hardware there. We might have to upgrade the hardware to get that weight. Triple glass is kind of heavy. So, you know, but yeah, roughly like that. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Sam. Uh, and just to give a little more context on both questions, the first one on the warranty and the glass, uh, it's always also good to think about what the frame is made out of, right? Uh, you know, wood, aluminum, UPVC, they all have different strengths that they can handle. So it's also good to discuss that with the window manufacturer, uh, in this case, Sam, to see which one is the best option so that it's, you know, cost effective and it also gives you the performance that you require. Um, can I add a little bit to that too? Can I add a little bit of that? Yeah, go ahead. You know, I, technically uh, it's about the stability of the window. And, 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 and in truth, all three windows are, are, are coated in plastic. Mm -hmm. All of them have a plastic shell on the outside. That's what the paint is. Uh, we, as a manufacturer, we don't ship unfinished windows. We send fully finished windows. And the reason is, is because we stabilize the moisture content of the timber when we factory finish it and assemble it. So therefore the window doesn't warp. It's actually in its state of permanent or final moisture content, which is the key to like warpage and stuff like that. <clears throat> the, but, but truthfully, the, 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 the triple painted PPG coating that we put on it is actually a coating of plastic as well. And when it comes to the aluminum and the other uh, clad system, it's the same thing. So ultimately they're all plastic on the finish, so. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question from Drake. Uh, why is aluminum clad so much more expensive than wood? So aluminum is not cheap and it's actually two windows if you think about it. Um, wood is just the wood component of aluminum clad window. And then you go and then <clears throat> add an, an additional system onto the face of it. So it is actually the wood window plus a cladding. Now the frame is reduced a little bit, but it's the labor component and the fact that you're adding another layer uh, to the window assembly. So extrusions are not cheap and those materials cost money, so. Uh, <clears throat> and from Drake as well, which frame material has the best U-value? UPVC. It is designed with multiple chambers and it actually has the highest performance. And the only way that you can get a wood window to start to perform like a UPVC window is use a lighter and, and, and softer wood. And it kind of goes against the structure of a wood frame to use frothier and lighter woods. And you, you, cannot, you can only do so much with, with, with soft timber at length. Uh, the only other way to do it is to start to add insulation to the wood frame on the exterior portion, which is our like thermal plus clads and the thermal clads, thermal plus. Uh, and then that just starts to add price, just like it does to the clad system. You start to add another component to the frame to try to boost the performance, and then you start to add layers and layers of cost onto that. Uh, the actual price performance winner is always UPVC. It's kind of the global go-to window when it comes to budget performance. Yeah, that's that, that's a good point too. Uh, no wonder why they're used so much into in the high rises and just like mass amount of windows that you have to get to the project in a cost-effective yeah. way and still, you know, achieve a good U-value depending on what you're going for. Yeah. Uh, let's see, there's another question. We get some people joining in <clears throat> after the PowerPoint. So uh, the presentation is being, was actually is being recorded. So all of this information is gonna be available uh, at your Passive House website. Sam, the question- from Trevor oh, the, was the question is, who, who is selling? Yeah, go ahead. If, if you live in Maine, where can you get Zola windows? And so Trevor, we sell direct to the customer. So you could reach out to Sam or any member of our sales team 
Orlando. Uh, <laughs> in order to uh, be able to have windows shipped directly from our manufacturing plant in Europe to your location in Maine. All right, he says, thank you very much. I'm yeah. sure you'll be the getting The product is delivered in a container customers. off the ship through trucking straight to the site. It's factory, it's factory delivered to every project site. So all the pricing includes all uh, global costs and stuff like that to move it around and get it from the factory to you. That's, that's part of what the Zola system is. Uh, and I have a question from Nadia. Uh, UPVC okay to install in New York City multifamily mid-rise. Say that again, do we? New York City, UPVC? Uh, yeah, if you can install a UPVC in multifamily mid-rise. Um, we've done a lot of uh, talking lately about this and the biggest component has to be uh, the Department of Health uh, swing limiter re requirement. So if the building has uh, a child fall swing limit VOH inspection requirement, uh, then there needs to be a discussion about the type of operation and hardware because tilt windows do not meet that requirement for DOH in New York City. It has to do with the 150 pound force to open the window and the hardware fails. So it can be done as a swing only, but we do not currently have a uh, setup that is approved by the Department of uh, Health Falls unit for a uh, UPVC turn only system. We can certainly do that, I mean, it just takes time and an engineer and a bunch of politicians to get together and get on the list. But, you know, oh, and money, we, we, we need to throw money at it. But but do know that it has to do with uh, the usage when it comes to the Department of Health with multifamily larger stuff, so. Yeah, that, that is correct. Dealing with the DOP and the Department of Health on this false protection is, it, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's a battle sometimes. But, uh, I mean, they're trying to keep everyone safe. We have to figure out how to get these pieces easier to get. They they want window uh, they want window bars on every window is what they really want. So yeah, um, I guess this is a more open question, not specifically for cost, um, but I guess I can make it about cost. The Drake is asking about e coatings and how they affect the U value in different seasons and temperature. But I would say, uh, aside from that, also how how would that um, how would that affect the cost depending on the per the performance you're trying to get, and that has to do with I guess solar heat gain coefficient and stuff like that. Okay, so e coatings uh, in conjunction to solar heat gain, and e coatings in conjunction to visibility, and e coatings in conjunction to UVA. Three separate answers. <laughs> so the question is, do we have a variety of e coatings for you to choose from? Uh, the answer is no, we only use the best one. So you, we won't sell you a lower quality one. The second question is, or the second answer is uh, visibility. Uh, we have, uh, we use low E coatings in the European Union, not the ones in the United States. They're the more advanced ones. The visibility for the glass is typically in the 70% for the low E coatings. As you go into a high, uh, cutting out the solar heat gain coefficient, that drops you know down into maybe the upper 60s, compared to the American coatings for the glass that you get in the uh, North and South America. Uh, that same visit VT is going to be in the, the 50s to 60s, and when you go into low E's, it's going to be in the 40s to 50s. It's a dramatic visual difference. And what you're going to see is the European high performance glass, uh, which is low iron, higher performance just from being low iron, and then the better coatings. Uh, provide a much clearer, it's going to be, it's not going to be the brown and green glass that you're expecting. It's going to have a slight tone to it, but it's not going to be brown glass like you see all over Texas. Um, so there's a big difference there. When it comes to, to the U value, uh, we use some pretty sophisticated coatings, uh, or at least we're, uh, we're given some pretty sophisticated, sophisticated coatings, as are most manufacturers in, in Northern Europe, because they, we all have all access to this. Um, and it boosts that U value dramatically. Uh, these UT premieres and stuff like that, those, those coatings are, are pretty, pretty awesome. So it does do the U value boost. That's how we can do a 52 millimeter glass with two coatings and get an R11 uh, performance out of that with super spacers and argon. Um, you wanna get on a call and talk about, <laughs> 
yeah, that, that's a long conversation. It's really it's sophisticated. A... It's a really interesting. I can run through reports and we can talk acoustics and laminates and everything. So it's yeah. really deep. So I, I have a question regarding that too. Um, I don't see any more questions in the chat, but if anybody has questions, add them to the chat. Uh, one thing I've been working on or trying to kind of figure out is does the lower solar heat gain increase the price of the glazing unit because you have to use a special low E and that's because I want to keep a higher visual transmittance, higher VT. So let's say the standard low E would be 0 0.5, 0 0.4, but if I want to go to like 0.3 for whatever reason and I want to keep the glass as transparent as I can, uh, do you, have you done that? Like, have you, have you come across that question? Like, oh, why didn't my price go up X amount just because I wanted to have lower coatings than if I was just using the standard? So, so the standard, uh, so there's two parts to this conversation. A is uh, when people ask for the solar heat gain co co coefficient, they, they, they probably are not asking for just the glass alone. They're probably asking for the NFRC total window, which includes the opaque frame. So for a European 0.5 SHGC glass in a regular tilt turn that's like three foot by four foot, that's gonna be about a 0 0.38, 0 0.40 SHGC in the NFRC realm, which is code. So, I mean, roughly when you do the math for excluding the frame dimension, which has no SHGC of zero, and then the glass, and the two of them together, it turns into that. Um, when people need to get down into the 0.29s and the, and the low 0.3s, that's when you need to actually upgrade the solar heat gain shutdown in the glass. And that does cost money. And the reason that costs money is because that's not a standard coating. That's not 90% of the glass produced. In Europe, they actually use exterior shading. And the reason is, is because in the winter time, they don't want the solar heat gain coefficient. They want to let the sun in so they can reduce their heating load. So in Northern European climates, they have exterior shade systems, both either hand movable on, on, on the slide, or they have an exterior shade that's on the outside because they understand that actually keeping the glass open and balanced at 0.5 allows them to uh, gain the heat when it's cool and keep out the heat when it's warm. And, and that's done through mechanical shade systems, not through glass programming that fixes it for one season. So there's two philosophies that you can do. And I think some of the best high performance buildings in the United States actually go with the philosophy of an exterior uh, shade system where you can turn on and off how much sun is hitting the window exterior and not actually just pre-program it and fix it into the glass, which is what the tendency is in the United States. So, does that help? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that, that's great. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a presentation about cost on windows and I think this is overload for many people. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, we have a couple more minutes and uh, I have another question from Greg. Do you like having a hard code on the interior surface, number six? or number four for a double glazed? Um, I'm gonna have to go back to, so I, I think we use two coatings uh, to get our U values and they're always on the exterior interior, if the exterior interior, uh, one, and, one and three <laughs> on a four, <laughs> on a two and then one and five on a triple, I mean. Six, oh, five. Five, yeah. See, I just said <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. It's well, one the six, six would be then outside of the interior. The coating, paint, the right? coating is soft, so it has to be on the interior side of the outside pane of glass to protect it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Often people use one. We use two. Uh, I think on the double, which I don't actually ever check because when it comes to performance, I never have to go do like high performance double uh, calculations for you. It's always on the triple that I'm doing this. But I believe we use two coatings as well. But it's always uh, sputtered sputtered and coated one molecule deep of like some sort of aluminum metal coating right on side inside the interior edge of the glass so yeah uh i don't see any more questions right now okay. um i 
I guess I would just add one more piece to keep in mind when you're designing and buying the window. Um, what do you think is a premium when you actually get the window delivered and then you have to handle, install, and do the final um, uh, maintenance? Because I think that also comes into play when you're designing your openings. Maybe you're designing something that just is more cost effective, but it's more complicated to operate or service. So would, would you put that within this conversation or that's a separate presentation altogether? Wow. I, I have a I have an interesting conversation. I have an interesting answer that you probably won't expect. Um, so nobody actually factors in the cost of a window or the window area against the cost of the wall that it is in or could replace. There's a reason why skyscrapers are glass. It's because they don't want two subs, one building solid walls and one building glass. It's actually, windows are actually cheaper and higher performing than solid walls inch per inch. Now you do need more thermal value. Uh, it's the totally different look. People have expectations for design. They don't want window houses that are all windows and this are hyper contemporary in California or you know the Southwest. So, Design drives the conversation, but if you really do look at price, pound for pound, windows are less expensive, both on the material and also on the labor to fill a wall than it is to actually do the wall with its full finish. And that's me as a contractor for a decade, knowing the budgets of like what it costs to frame and finish and put on the siding and run the drywall and paint it and do all this stuff. Windows are cheaper to do that. So there are ways to use windows, and I've seen this in European systems that are modular for high rises, where they actually do an exterior finish and window. And then they actually do something to the outside of the window to make it look different. And then they do a, a frame wall with additional insulation on the inside of the window. And it becomes this like transition panel where the window and glass stays contiguous, but they start to use it as a solid finish. And so these systems will eventually trickle their way into the United States but it's not until more BIM and more computer systems are used for this whole like, thing. So um, I, pound for pound though, a window is way higher performance and cheaper than actually building a wall, so. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's that it's definitely more cost-effective in the end. If, I mean, if you have, if the window package is too much for your project and you're trying to value engineer, more often than not, it's better to value engineer the wall and try to actually make it less because then you have then you have less people to manage less people that you have to check their work yeah less issues with infiltration connections to the membrane thermal bridges so i think it's a more holistic approach to think about it as yes i have a product and how is this product going to make my whole assembly better just because this is something that can i can get a lot of design and uh you know light value out of so I think it's it, it's important to keep it in mind, and that's why I, I brought this mm -hmm. comment no, slash question to you. And more commercial projects use uh, windows as spandrel glass and and request back painted glass for opaqueness, which they then add additional insulation and do a finish wall on the inside. So you don't even see the transition on the inside, but the outside stays holistic and high performance. And that's maybe even uh, less expensive than framing a wall. Anyway, wholly different presentation, Jose. <laughs> so yeah that i mean well I, I know we will have more space for you uh and for solid to present and you know keep expanding the conversation i'll i'll Great. do my part to give you the curveball questions and see i'll take them what other information we can get get from it uh so i don't have any more questions uh yeah we're, we're glad this is a very informative presentation that's definitely the, the goal here and I think I can let everyone go six minutes before one, so you can enjoy a little bit of relaxation before going back to work. Um, Get a coffee, go back to sleep. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a little jittery from the coffee. I need to stop <laughs> drinking the coffee now. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if there's no more questions, uh, people can unmute if you want, uh, but if not, then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll stop it here and we'll see you in the awesome. next one. And I'll stick around for a little bit for questions that anybody want to talk to me directly about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, well, anybody gets a little bit more courage to talk or send a question if they have any. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad this was a presentation to share, uh, to, you know, to share with people because it's something that I guess you don't see very often actually looking at what is the best option for you and your, and your opening and also your performance. And I guess the next one will be the, the price versus the performance value of it. Which one is the best? If you're looking for passive files or something very specific. I'm gonna answer a question Felix just asked about uh, lead times. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's the current lead time for solar windows? So, so Felix, our, our production uh, time is maybe a week or so longer because of COVID, but the rest of this lead time has to do with international shipping and the chaos that is what everyone's dealing with. I think our lead times for windows, once an order is placed with all specifications and down payment to, to site, I believe, and Linda can correct me on this, is somewhere in between 16 and 19 weeks up from 14 to 16 weeks. It's like two or three weeks longer. Is that correct, Linda? That's, that's accurate. Yeah. It has to do with ships sitting off the port, waiting for weeks just to get unloaded. It has to do with containers that are so hard to acquire and just takes an extra week to get. Right. And one of the yeah. benefits of shipping to New York City is that's one of the shorter lead times because it's one of the shorter distances. From Europe mm -hmm. to the East Coast. All right, can you repeat this again? What what was the lead time for? Let's get to uh, to New York. Sixteen to nineteen weeks currently. Okay. All of that has to do with container situation. So, usually it's fourteen yeah, to sixteen weeks. That that's a plague right now for everyone that tries to import anything. But yeah, that that has been the case for most manufacturers. I I also know. So it's it's a hard time for everyone. Uh, another question in there uh, about lead uh, from right. Timothy. Uh, what is the typical lead time on shop drawing phase? T Timothy, we have a bunch of standard drawings, which means that somebody who doesn't have specialty openings probably doesn't need a shop drawing phase, and we can coordinate what your details are with that. Uh, but if you do need some shop drawings for some of the uh, more complicated openings, it takes, it takes about a week, week and a half to get that turned around uh, to specify like arch tops and weird connections or shaped windows. So. Uh, we could probably get away with 90 plus percent, 95 percent of your project not needing a shop drawing. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it is two minutes to one. I guess I'll uh, I'll stop the record, the recording here. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jose. Yeah. Sam, for a fabulous presentation yep. representing Zola Windows, and thank sure. you, Jose, for the opportunity to present with New York Passive House. You yeah, know, thank you, guys. It's always welcome to bring the good information in. All right, guys. See you later. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.